Okay, so I'm going to do a, uh, a quick video here on the guided practice and independent practice sections for lesson 3.8, repeated reasoning. And I think you're going to find some of this pretty familiar, and, uh, and hopefully you'll start to see the patterns here, and this helps a little bit. Okay, so uh, first thing I always tell you all is to make sure that you look for the information that they're giving you. In this case, you've got a, a little hint right here. When you generalize, you make a statement about a larger group based on examples that are true. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to use facts that we already know to help us solve these equations, okay? Now, in this case, you can see you already have the answers to each of these problems, right? It would be valid to call these products or sums, because you see that we're also working with this. So our, our multiplication equations over here on the left. So in that case, it's a product, but because we're also breaking it down into addition problems, it is also a sum. So what factors, which factors do Ricardo use repeatedly to find the products? Well, factors, again, are the numbers in the multiplication equation, okay? So what we're going to look for here is what he did is he took 3 times 8, broke it down into... 2 times 8 plus 1 times 8, right? 2 times 8 plus 1 times 8. And he ended up with 24. In this case, he took 3 times 7, broke it apart into 2 times 7 plus 1 times 7, and it ended up, ended up with 21. Down here, he did 6 times 1 and 6 times 2. Okay, so if you notice, each time he used 2's facts and 1's facts. So what he did here is he repeatedly used two's facts and one's facts to come up with the accurate the uh, accurate products for each one of these equations here. So in terms of making a generalization, you may want to write a sentence, Ricardo repeatedly used two's and one's, two's facts and one's facts to come up with the products for each of these equations. You can use two's and one's to help you come up with the correct answers okay so and oftentimes that's true but you can use other types of facts as well and we will continue down the page to find some additional examples okay so let's take a quick look at these complete this equation to test whether your generalization is true so they want you to complete the equation to test whether your generalization generalization is true and then they want you to explain anytime in your workbook where it says explain I want to see a complete sentence. So I want you to say, my generalization was true because, or something along those lines, okay? Always make sure you restate as well. Now, in this case, it says 3 times 9 equals blank times blank plus blank times blank, and you have the product there at the end. Well, if you already know the product here, you could add that in now and then break it apart, or we can work this out just like we would with the distributive property, okay? So in that case, let's break this apart. Let's do the same thing that they did above. Let's do 2 times 9 plus 1 times 9. Well, in this case, 2 times 9. Remember, any time you have a 2, you're doubling the other factor, okay? So it's going to be 18 plus, and remember, remember every time that you multiply a factor by 1, it will always be that factor. So you've got 18 plus 9. In this case, 18 plus 9 equals, well, and in every case, 27. So it means the product of 3 times 9 is 27, okay? So in this case, you may say, uh, my generalization is that I can use 2's facts and 1's facts to solve the equation 3 times 9, okay? And explain it. This is what I did. I took 2 times 9 plus 1 times 9. And that equals 27. That is the same product as 3 times 9. Okay, let's take a look at some of these bottom ones here as well. Now, we're in the independent practice section, uh, but I do want to go over a few of these just to make sure that you understand them, okay? Now, I always say this in class. Don't make life more difficult for yourself. Always look at the information they're giving you, okay? So, in this case, it means they already gave you the products for each of these, you are just determining whether or not what, excuse me, what factors Mary used repeatedly. It says, which factors did Mary use repeatedly to find the products, okay? And then you're going to make a generalization. So you're going to write a quick sentence here. Now, I want you, though, to make sure that you know 
that when you look back at these over here, you already have the products for these equations, okay? So now you already know these answers. You're just looking to see what Mary used, what factors. Again, a factor is a number in a multiplication equation. What factors she used repeatedly? Well, let's take a look. So in this case, you see that there are two sevens. So you know that she used a five and a three. She broke that up. And remember, five plus three equals eight. And she did that because we have an 8 right here, right? So let's look at this one. Looks like she kept the 6s, okay? So she kept the 6 from the equation over here. And she broke it down again into a 5 and a 3. And the 5 and the 3 equal 8, just like above. In this case, once again, she kept the 9s. And she took 5 and 3. 5 plus 3 again is 8. And that's what she did. So she repeatedly used 5s facts and threes facts to get the right answer here. So you may say you can use five fa fives facts and threes facts to get the correct answers to these equations. Okay? Now down here, it's another one similar to the one up there. Complete this equation to test whether your generalization is true for other facts. Okay? True for other facts. Now, a generalization is is taking uh, some information, a, a, a sort of a, a truth, and applying it to a, a larger statement, right? So, in this case, they want you to you complete this equation here to test whether your generalization is true for other facts and explain it. Now, the generalization we made up here is that we could use threes facts. I'm going to write that down. Threes facts and fives facts. Now, I know I haven't written sentences here, and I want to see you write sentences, but I'm just going to write down the key information. Threes facts and fives facts, okay? Well, let's break it apart. So let's keep the three. Let's keep the three. We'll put three in there. And then let's break it apart into five times three and three times three. Again, fives and threes, right? Well, five times three is 15. Three times three is nine. Now you have 15 plus nine. You can go ahead and come over here. Add those together, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, carry that, now you've got 24, 8 times 3 is indeed 24, and obviously that means that 15 plus 9 is 24, and your generalization is correct. Now what I want you to do here, again because it says explain, is include a sentence that says, my generalization was correct because using 5s and 3s facts, I was able to break apart 8 times 3, the equation 8 times 3, and still receive the correct product. And again, breaking that up like that, we've talked about this, that is the distributive property, okay? So just remember that. You're basically using the distributive property here. Let's move down a little bit. Okay, let's just do one more here. What is another way you can use known facts, that's like the 3s and 5s, to solve 8 times 3? What generalization can you make from this? So you're going you're gonna to figure out another way to solve this, okay, to break it apart. And then you are going to write another generalization. Again, a sentence here, okay, and explain what you did. In this case, let's look at 8 times 3. So we've got 8 times 3. We've already tried the 3s and 5s facts, but let's try something different. Let's look at a different one. Let's, once again, let's keep that... Uh, Let's keep that 3, and let's break apart that 8. Let's break it apart. And what other way can we break that apart? Well, we could break it apart into 4 times 3 plus 4 times 3, right? Because 4 plus 4 is 8. So in that case, we have 12 plus 12, which equals 24. So you can use 4's facts here as well. Now, of course, there are other ways that you could do this too. Um, again, we know the 5 and 3. You could do 6 and 2. That's another option. And if you did 6 and 2, so let's say we had 8 times 3 equals 6 times 3 plus 2 times 3. You would have 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 times 3 is 6, 18 plus 6 is 24, and you'd have the same product there. Okay? So there are a number of ways you can use the distributive property here, and a number of ways you can break this up. I will uh, create other videos very shortly. If you have any questions, just let me know.